During the night, I wake up before sunrise due to it being downright freezing in here. Stumbling towards the fire, I see that Eldrin has fallen asleep, face down in front of the fire. Looking into the fire, I see that it is not much more than a bed of coals and not a lot of space left in the firebox. Poking and prodding Eldrin, I try to get him to wake, even doing knuckle rubs on his chest. But nothing. He is out cold. Fearing he might be slipping into cold shock and realizing most inhabitants here will not be far behind since I find it so cold. I grab the fire shovel and start bailing out the ashes, leaving a few small coals inside. My lungs burn from the ash as I transfer it into a nearby bucket and then get to work rebuilding the fire. With cold fingers, I lay some bark pieces on top of the few coals I kept and begin to blow. My eyes are immediately filled with the ash and soot of the dying fire and I cannot see, but I continue blowing. Slowly I feel warmth on my face from the flames I cannot see. I start stuffing logs into the fire, ensuring there is enough space between them to allow for airflow through the front hatch for when I close it. Blowing harder into the fire, the flames begin to lick up the sides of the new logs and they begin to crack and pop as the moisture within starts to melt and boil off. I continue to stoke, using the trowel to push logs further back to ensure a good fire along the box's entire length. Looking at it now, I realize the firebox is similar to what I saw for maple sap boiling into syrup. I will need to talk to them to see if they collect sap come the spring. The heat is starting to build up, so I remove my coat as sweat pours down my face and back. I head over to the water tub and, using my cup, drink heavily after breaking the centimeter of ice that has formed on top. Returning to the fire, I see that Eldrin is starting to move. I poke him again and eventually wake him. Hey, you're finally awake, I say half-jokingly. What? He stares at me groggily. The fire's back up. You fell asleep and I could not wake you. Hearing that, he suddenly jumps to his feet and peers into the firebox and at the ash bucket. I must have fallen asleep upon the fire cooling, he says, palming his face in fear and shame. Thank you. You probably saved all of us. Not sure how to respond to that. I nod and start passing him logs as he rearranges the fire to be even hotter and adjusts a handle on the smokestack, which I assume is the damper so that it does not draw as much. Hey, Eldrin, once we get out of this cold snap, remind me to talk to you about steam boilers and engines. Engines, eh? We will be the most advanced backward town by the end of the year if you keep this up. The boiler may be more of an easy sell to the community. Think, central heat for the entire building using water to warm it all, even the corners. Water for heat? You'll need to explain more of that. Water is horrible for temperature. It takes forever to heat. Yes, but equally as long to cool, given the same insulation. Hmm, we will definitely be talking about that. I sit down on the cool but warming floor near where many of the other sleeping bodies are crowding around the fire and watch him work to ensure he does not fall asleep again. Once the fire gets so hot I can no longer handle it, I make my way back over to my spot near Thalion and Lena and crawl back into my bedroll. The next morning, I wake up to a heavy weight on my chest. Rolling over, I see that Lena has draped her arm across me. Immediately my heart races and I start trying to slip out from under her arm without disturbing her, successfully doing so by bunching up some of the bedroll to mimic me. I look back and see that, though her eyes are closed, she has a faint smile on her face. Looking outside, I see that the day is cloudy but finally warming up. There is a light snowfall and there is no ice in the water tub. Eldrin is at the fire like always, but caught in deep thought. Going over to him, I whisper, Save for last night, do you ever sleep? Aye, but when there's a big job to be done, I stay awake for the whole thing. This, this is the biggest job there is, and I failed. You did not fail. It has been over a week, 
and you have not slept? Go lie down. I can tend the fire now. The weather is starting to warm too. I would not be surprised if we are done later today. Nodding and without argument, Eldrin lowers his massive frame to the floor and collapses into a deep sleep in seconds. Picking up the fire tools, I continue to poke and prod the fire to keep it going as everyone slowly wakes up, unknowing how close to death they all were. Hours pass, and then the pastor steps forth. May I have your attention, please? The murmuring of the crowd quickly stops. Thank you. Has everyone had soup today? After a few minutes of discussion, everyone agrees. Okay. I would like everyone to move to the far wall, please, and thank you. Doing so, we see the damage of having this many people cooped up inside, with bedrolls, extra articles of clothing, and a few toys scattered around the entire room, along with one large lump near a different wall. The pastor and the doctor step forth and open the bedroll and quickly look away. The room gasps and starts talking quickly. Silence! the pastor states. Now is not the time for that. Theron Windrider has passed from the cold. Let us take a moment of silent vigil and prayer at this moment. Everyone bows their heads and even the kids know to be quiet. Eventually the pastor speaks. Heavenly Father, in your boundless mercy, we humbly beseech you to embrace Theron Windrider in your eternal grace. As he has devoted his life to your sacred service, we pray that you welcome him into your heavenly realm with open arms. In this time of profound mourning, we ask that you provide solace and strength to Theron's family and loved ones. Surround them with your comforting presence and fill their hearts with your love and peace. May your divine light guide them through their grief and uplift their spirits as they move forward. We entrust Theron to your care, and seek your blessings upon all who grieve his passing. Amen. The group goes silent. The pastor walks towards the bedroll, and calls a few others to help. Slowly, they pick up the bedroll, and walk to one of the rooms attached to the hall, and return empty-handed. A few adults are crying while being comforted by others. Off to the side, I see Merwin staring directly at me, and I also see Eldrin trying to make himself seem smaller, even though he is taller than everyone else in the room. Unsure of what to do, I approach Eldrin and just stand by him. It's not your fault, I whisper. He picks me up in one arm and holds me close to him as his emotional turmoil comes collapsing down and he weeps openly. <laughs>